morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kagho coming at you with another video. So today, I'm going to be going over Shadowlands, everything that it's been doing. That's what I've been at. You know, I've been gearing up, grinding. It's been really, really fun. I'm enjoying it all. Um, I definitely think this is a really good expansion. It has some potential but one of the biggest things that i ran into was once you hit 60 getting slammed with everything it can be quite overwhelming tons of people have been asking me questions just in my guild and things like that so i wanted to take the time to sort of make a guide and sort of everything you can do once you hit 60 and sort of uh, everything with that but first we have the question of the day so my question for you guys is going to be are you playing shadowlands do you enjoy it what do you think of it and please, please tell me um, everything that you've encountered, what you like, what you dislike, and everything with that. Because that would be uh, really, really cool to hear. And I would love to uh, get some feedback from you guys. Me personally, I'm loving it. I, As I mentioned, um, I think there's a lot of potential here. The one thing I kind of dislike is the gatekeeping right now. But I suppose there is merit to it. And it allows you to not feel incredibly overwhelmed or allow people to get super, super um, above the the rest just because they have more time to play the game so i do kind of like the little bit of gatekeeping they've done because there is still tons of things you can do upon hitting 60. so first things first here in shadowlands the biggest change um that you sort of have to run into is going to be with the questing and what you can do um with shadowlands so in order to even progress whether you're 60 or not you have to do path of ascension blade of the primus awaken iron wield and master of raven Dreth. now these are all the uh zones um it's pretty much a very very straight line story you just follow the story um they even have your quest broken down into uh main campaign quests which this is my covenant right here and then they have all the other side quests so you just do the main campaign ones and you can blow through it um honestly i found it really surprising because you'll hit 60 um i hit 60 before i was even done with it because i did a lot of side quests in bastion when i first started um i would honestly recommend just going straight through the main story on your first character um obviously if you like lore or anything else you can always go back and do that or you can do them on alts if you really want to take advantage of those side quests but the biggest thing thing is um, that you finish those because without finishing the these four um, quest lines you cannot progress even at 60 which is something completely new and I kind of like it because it sort of gives everyone the story and honestly the Shadowlands story in the initial quest arc is really really awesome I enjoyed it a ton and I liked how they told a really really good story throughout the zones to have you hit max level um, anyway once you hit 60 you're, you come back to Orbos and you have to go do your covenant so you pick your covenant honestly i just google i've been playing arcane mage i just went to wowhead and found what covenant was best for me and it's by far night fey i wanted to be uh Kyrian, but you know night fey was the best ability here here's my arcane mage night fey ability if you want to see what that is um but pretty much it makes all my cooldowns lower and my spec is highly built on cooldowns so it was pretty much a no-brainer to pick Night Fey as an Arcane Mage. Um, you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, that's how the game works. Sometimes you got to do um, what's best for your character and what you really want to do in the game, regardless of what you might like or dislike. So that's what it is with that. Um, and then once you do that, you go into, um, you get your your main quest line and you have the maw so there's a lot of stuff in the maw and we can go here right now as well as you also get Torghast. So I'm going to be making a more in-depth guide on these to sort of cover this, but this is a general overview. So in order to go to the Maw, um, you learn this while questing, but you just come down to the second story of Orbos, and then you jump in here. And now while in the Maw, you're going to uh, meet this trader person, which you met during your leveling experience. And this trader person um, sort of establishes a little uh, foothold for you down here and they give you daily quests and you build reputation with her and she also sells a lot of um, items and things that really can help you um, 
navigate the Maw and Torghast. She has some really nice rewards, and something I like is once you buy these rewards, they uh, disappear here, so you can't really duplicate buy. Um, but some an example is like permanent upgrade for the Maw. Um, the Maw Sworn Assassins never really um, attack you. That's something that's super cool. Badge of Seniority. Um, the um, and Torghast brokers will offer uh, uncommon things. But while you're in the Maw, so you're going to get a bunch of quest lines, and there's also daily quests, as you can see here. Um, but while you, the first day you hit 60, it's so, so important that you do not kill any rares or deviate much from the quest line. I killed a few, and my bar got to, like, right here in Tier 4. Like, I was so close to hitting Tier 5. And you do not want to hit Tier 5, because if you hit Tier 5, you cannot be in the mall. Like, you cannot be in this zone. The only place that you can be is right where I'm standing, and you can go to Toriast. Um, but it's just really, really important that you do not do anything other than the main quest line. Um, I cannot emphasize that enough, because if you do that, and you can do that and some day but if you do anything else, kill anything else for fun or to get rep or anything like that, save that for the second day. I promise you, um, if you come in here, you will get your rep up and it will be bad. But after you do the intro quest with her, um, you then go to Torghast. And once you're in Torghast, some super um, important things to mention is um, how Torghast works is you you climb each floor of the thing so you have the introductory ones where you will go and you will save bane bloodhoof and that is just sort of an introductory quest line and you go talk to uh, bolvar and a few other uh, people um just to sort of introduce you to torgas and now how torgas works um, after that is it has levels so right now there are only two zones out and that is the upper reaches as well as the um, soul forge and so once you've unlocked it you can climb those uh, levels and so you can only get to level three right now because you are sort of um, you're locked it's time gated so you can't go above and beyond and because you can only go to level three on two of the um, towers you can only proceed um you can only get a soul ash of 810 so after you do the quest line of unlocking the jailer or not the jailer sorry the um uh the smith he makes uh, your legendaries i forget his exact name i guess going to torgas sort of bugged out my game here um, so I can't remember his exact name. I think he's the forger or something um, But he's the guy you're gonna make legendaries and soul ash is the currency that you get from Torghast in order to do this So the cap right now is 810 from Torghast now in your um, Covenant order hall your or I guess it's not an order hall that's from Legion, but in your Covenant hall you're able to go and get um some improvements and you get anima and stuff like that and that anima allows you to um upgrade it and stuff like that um i'm gonna end my game here one second we'll cut real quick Alrighty, guys so i guess that broke my game i guess torgas is down or something right now i don't know i just tried to go in there never had that issue but i couldn't load in there i tried to go in a few times and it just didn't work but Essentially, those are the layers, and something important you can do, I'd recommend clearing these sometime this week. Make sure you do layer 3 on both of them. But also important to mention, pick one, Soul Forges or Upper Reaches. I found Soul Forges to be easier. Personally, I'm a mage, so that might be different if you are melee. But I got to Soul Forge layer 3, defeated it, and then you can go straight to Upper Reaches. And instead of having to clear Upper Reaches of 1, 2, and 3, you can just clear Upper Reaches 3. So that's super important. Um, and then here is the order hall. This is the Night Fae one because I am Night Fae, obviously. So um, when you get here, you're going to get um, your uh, upgrades here. This is true for everyone, regardless of what you pick. There's a teleport network. There's an anima conductor. There's a command table. And then there's something else. But this we won't be able to see till week two because Renowned is capped uh, three per week. So you can get your three, and that sort of keeps everything in check. So the big one is the command table and your anima conductor. Um, your anima conductor, we can take a look right here. Um, these let you pick areas, and they last for two days. So, like, I am going to pick this area because it will last for that long. And this will be up 
for the reset. So as long as you pick these um, timely, like this one is still up from yesterday, so I can go and get that, and then I can go here and fight someone at a uh, theater and whatnot. And it's just a rare guy, and that's pretty much what these are. These other ones are unavailable at the moment. I'm not sure when they become available, but um, you also get a adventure table if you will and that is going to be over here for the night fay it's outside and then you also get your uh, emissary quest kind of thing so this one's complete three world quests in bastion and you will be rewarded that so you have to uh um i'll have to go to bastion do three world quests nice and easy and then i will be rewarded that um so there's just so many things in here and confusing ish types of uh, stuff. Um, I'm trying to just generally overview it. I would highly recommend you do this adventure table. Um, it will um, reward you with things and you leveling up your guys. Um, I would try your best because doing this, um, it allows adventure campaign progress and I know you can get Soul Ash from this. Um, I found my second adventurer here in Torghast. Um, I'm not sure if it depends on your covenant or anything like that but it's pretty nice the first one you just get and then most of the others you won't get until you are further along so I, i'm not sure what i did to upgrade these guys but they got upgraded here um something you can do is just sort of read these guys um it, it heals the closest ally for that so i like to put these people in the middle this is my hero healer and this is my hero deep so i put them in the back this is just sort of a standard run through that i do with each of these since this is a big campaign one, i'm going to use both my heroes to beat this um similar to any of the other ones and you can't just put these guys you have to have a hero in order to start the campaign without it you will not be able to do it so that's just something cool to sort of let you know and i'll continue to sort of monitor that and get rewards i know you can get additional soul ash from those um but as you saw right there we got some bones and some leather from doing that one um and just sort of manage that properly um i'd recommend like if you have a big long one i'd recommend doing that like when you go to bed and stuff and then just keep doing these four hour ones while you can um, important to note is you will get a weekly quest to get a thousand anima. Um, the best way to do that, at least the first week, is to do the dungeons. So a few of the dungeons have quests. I believe three of them that will earn you 750 anima. And there are um, eight dungeons here. I believe they are Theater of Pain, um, they, the other side, and uh, Sagwain Depths. I believe those are the three that will get it or no it's halls of atonement i think it's the other side hall of the atonement and theater of pain those quests theater of pain quests there is one you got to do a little early you have to like talk to this guy go over here and then he will tell you to go in there and clear it you can clear it on any difficulty um you just have to kill the bosses and then it'll give you 750 anima which is really really big you just don't get them till 60. the other side and the halls of atonement you get when you go inside of those instances so that's super easy to get that anima weekly done but you'll have that anima weekly and then you'll have that to go sort of help someone and then each of these um tributes are just like uh legion and battle for azeroth you just go do what it says and you'll get 1500 ref with your people i'm already honored with the wild hunt so i've been pretty lucky just been doing the world quests for them and stuff like that so that's it, guys. That's the general overview here. That's all the tips, everything I've learned, everything I personally messed up and sort of tried to overcome in order to get things. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Um, anything like that, I will do my very best to help you guys and sort of all that. I'll give a more detailed tour guest and Ma walkthrough um, when I can. And, yeah, so I will see you next time, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day, and that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.